Welcome back. This is part two of our cold case installation series with twin 14 inch fans. Yeah, so episode one, if you missed it, we actually put the twin 14s I got from cold case on my Be Cool radiator, which had twin 12s, and we proved that bigger is better. Yeah, shocking news, right? <laughs> so during that process, I pulled the radiator. I was going to put this one in. I noticed we still have some more work to do. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do some uh, cleanup work in the engine compartment, some cosmetic work on the radiator. And if you missed it last episode, I actually welded on an AN fitting. Uh, but I'll, today we'll briefly talk about Auto Plum's AN fittings, which can be put on without welding. I'll do that on the top of this one. And, but most importantly, we're going to do some math and science real quick. We need to measure the differences between these two radiators and especially the, the guts of the radiators that are actually dramatically different and may, they're probably dramatically different than your radiator and might give you an idea that maybe you should pursue a cold case just in case you're having heating problems. And you can use my discount code, FASTMONTY, which is below. And or bare minimum, get some twin 14 inch fans from cold case and put them on your radiator. So check out video one if you missed it. Other than that, let's go ahead. I'm gonna switch these around, um, get some more space, but I'm gonna start measuring and show you the square inch difference and the difference of the guts. Hopefully start doing our mock-up and, and end this video with a test and road test. So here we go. Clearly I got them out. So the Be Cool radiator behind us. And when you're looking at a new radiator, the most important thing about air cooling anything is surface area. So let's start by measuring the difference here. 28 and three quarters, just shy of 27 and a half. So that's like an inch and a quarter more surface area lengthwise. Let's see top to bottom is probably pretty close. Ha, B cools an inch taller. So they're probably pretty close for max surface area. I'll do the math and write it down in a second. But the next thing we need to discuss is the width. All right, the cold case radiator is basically 2.7 inches wide or thick. And the B cool, oh, dramatically slimmer. We're looking at 2.25. So there's a bigger area of volume inside the radiator. Let's go ahead and look inside here. So I'm not sure if you can see in there. I'm trying to get the camera to focus, but do you guys see this long, it looks like a slit? That is actually the tube. So when you uh, hear people talking about how many cores does your radiator have, or how much the tube size, that is one core. So this is a dual core radiator. And what cold case is known for are the biggest tubes. Those are about an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch and a half wide. Let's go look at the, the Be Cool radiator. Okay, the Be Cool radiator, you can see in there, so if I can get the camera to focus down in there. But it also has some pretty decent tubes. They're not as fat as the cold case, and purely because we measured the width here. It's impossible to, to stick the same tube width in this radiator that the cold case has. Let's go to the drawing board and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, I promised you some math and science. So I went ahead and measured everything with the width and height. So the cold case radiator is 483 square inches. And if you were curious, um, the ballpark number you should be searching for when you get a radiator is your horsepower times one inch is the rough. So if you had a 483 horsepower engine this would be the perfect radiator but we are size constrained you know obviously if you have 600 horsepower good luck finding a bit, big enough radiator to fit 600 square inches under your hood so we gotta do gotta do uh, be cool is at 472 roughly the same size now when i measure the volume so this time give you some perspective remember the depth 2.7 inch depth the volume is this number times that number 1300 cubic inches now that's not um, pure volume of liquid. That's just the, the space that the fins and the tubes take up that are exposed to air. And the Be Cool radiator was thou a thousand uh, cubic inches. So just so you know, 300 cubic inches is 
a little over five quarts, if you can visualize that. Again, that's just the air going through the radiator, that, uh, the, the, like the aluminum volume that the air gets to touch. It's not a liquid number. Now let's talk about the cores. We talked about this earlier. So here are the different core sizes. This is actually to scale. This is the uh, cold case radiator compared to Be Cool. You see the big difference there? So what's happening is air is coming in across the radiator and it's pulling heat out of these fins because coolant is in each of these tubes. So these tubes have coolant in them. So the bigger, the, the flatter, the wider the tube, the more surface area there is for that air to get that extract heat from that aluminum tube. The Be Cool radiator, they are a decent size. So these are one inch. Those are very decent for a, a radiator. So compared to stock, I can't remember what stock is, but it's not that good. So if you have a stock radiator, either radiator will, will be an improvement, but obviously the more surface area, the better. Now let's talk about a four core radiator. Why two core versus four core? So this is four core. Notice there are th four tubes here. The tubes are smaller. Now one theory is as air goes across here and hits these brakes in each, between each tube, it creates turbulent air. The more turbulent the air is, the less chance of it of withdrawing heat. You want what's called laminar flow. Laminar flow is actually smooth flowing air or liquid across those planes to pull heat. So that's the theory. Ah, oh, yes, all that said. Now, that's why I was attracted to the cold case radiator purely from science point of view. So now let's go tackle getting it under the hood and see what we got to do to mock it up. Okay, before we get nuts, cold case also has replacement rubber um, supports. And this is the OEM for my car and it fits right here. So if you're going to change your radiator out, you might as well get new rubber supports. The old ones are probably old, hardened up, decayed, whatever. And there are two on a stock radiator. There are two on the bottom, two on the top. Um, but I'm just using the bottom ones, and I'll show you why in a second. So let me get the radiator in, in here, see what we got to do. Like a glove. Let me show you how it fits on the sides. So this is what it looks like. The radiator is not seated, but all the way down there, you can probably see the rubber support. It's right on the edge of the tank. It's also on the tank on the other side, which is fine. And you want to snug it up as close as you can. And now this is where we have to get creative because most of us have a different uh, radiator support and you might have to trim it. So I trimmed this one to fit the Be Cool radiator. It did fit better. You see that tiny gap that runs the length? Um, should be okay, but I'll monitor that, um, especially the gap on the side. Can't see it here. There's not much of a gap on this side, which is fine. The other side has this gap. So that's what I'm going to monitor when we're driving around town and stuff for airspeed, because it can bypass the radiator. We talked about shrouds before. Uh, so now, how do we secure this thing is a great question. So there is a bracket kit you can get from a cold case. But I'm going to use the same brackets I had with my Be Cool radiator. This is one of them. And there's actually already a tapped hole in the side of the radiator support, radiator core. So I'm just going to screw it down like that and that will hold it in place. So I have one on the other side as well. Um, before we do that, we have to talk about some more aesthetics. You guys know I love my new gloss black look trying to get rid of the aluminum look. I'm okay with the pulleys right now, but this top surface is going to be exposed and it is milled or brushed or whatever. It's got some scratches in it, probably from shipping. I don't like it. So, uh, I think we need to discuss some gloss black on this thing. So let me show you what I'm going to use before we get to painting. I have this crazy idea. You guys remember I mentioned that little gap. See that gap right here? That goes all the way along the length, following this edge. What I'm going to do, and this is optional for you guys, but I'm going to, I'm going to trim this core support to match that profile. 
and it's on both sides. So we can pull the radiator back and seal up that gap the entire length. Oh, crazy ideas I get. So that's what I'm going to do. Again, optional for you guys, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So that gap from the actual core to the core support is a little over a quarter inch. And we're just going to maintain this th thickness here because that's how far back we want to cut to get that profile. Now to, ma to match that profile, this cool tool I got on Amazon. Bam, there's the profile. So now I can pull that profile back a little over a quarter inch and trace it on my blue tape. And that's where my cut line is. There we have it. So as long as I cut that line off, then that will fit. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, get the radiator out of here, cover some stuff up, and I'll get to cut. And I'll probably use just my um, flap disc grinder and just grind that down. Maybe even a cutoff wheel, just get that little edge right there. Here we go. Okay, I'm hermetically sealed. And I'm just going to take my um, cutoff wheel and go straight through that. There's plenty of room underneath. So, I mean, I have like that much room if I really want to get crazy. And I'm probably going to take my same, the same idea and go straight across and then finish up the remaining with uh, my flap disc. There we go. Okay, one cut done. Well, status report. So I'm ready to test fit. So now I have to undo my plastic and uh, hopefully it's a one-time shot. Look at that. Pretty good. See how that gap closed up in here? So I have a little bit more to go. I'm debating doing even more to get this to fit further underneath that edge. But the problem is I'm running out of room down here. The core support is almost touching the radiator, so I'm debating. Do I leave it as is or not? So we'll see when we come back. Oh yeah, that's how it was. That was the gap originally, and we trimmed it back. So look, it goes underneath. Oh, that's perfect. It looks killer. And I also had to trim that little side piece down there that we pointed out. Not a big deal. But that looks badass. Sorry, I'm just promoting my own work. But um, next step here is what you want to do is on that bare edge, make sure you coat that with like POR15, which is my favorite. Um, for rust preventative and uh, the next step here is to paint this bad boy because I think I want this gloss black would look pretty awesome and uh, because the remember the fan the fan shroud in the back is still going to be um, that nice aluminum polished aluminum so we'll do gloss black treatment and uh, I'll get set up for that and show you what paint I'm going to use all right, just a quick before picture. This is the front of the radiator, and I also um, filmed the Be Cool radiator through the front grill on the GOAT. So hopefully after we put the uh, new black radiator in, we'll see the difference when how it looks from the outside of the car. But the paint I'm going to use is this stuff from Eastwood. It's actually for radiators. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this whole front black. The back side, I'm going to save paint. I'm not going to paint the um, finned area because it's going to be covered by the fans. So I'm going to go throw it in my paint booth. Just kidding. I don't have a paint booth, but my backyard. So I'm going to go and do that. Be right back. There she is, gloss black. And yeah, I know you can't really paint in those fins very easily. So there are some darker spots, but it doesn't matter because this is behind the bumper. And the condenser is like right in front. So majority of it's black. My worry was the sides, how the gloss black would look. It looks awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the car and uh, mount it up. Oh, yes. Good call on the gloss black. What do you think, team? Oh, my gosh. I love it. Love when I make the right decisions for once. <laughs> now we have another challenge. So it's not mounted yet because we have a gap on the bracket. Two reasons, I think. One, we obviously pulled the radiator back, remember? And um, second reason is I think the Be Cool wells are slightly fatter, so we have a bracket issue. 
So I'm going to pull that. I'm going to first measure this distance, pull the bracket, see if we can make another hole in the bracket. If not, we have to come up with a plan B. So uh, more work, more fun. All right, here's a close up of my existing bracket and I can't take the blame for this. This is actually a really simple solution that my, the prior mechanic did. This is a Stanley L bracket, like from Home Depot, with like a one inch tube pressed on the end to act as a bracket. I think that's a pretty brilliant idea. You can tell because the countersunk holes of a standard L bracket, and they drilled a hole here, but I need a quarter inch, which is almost that far, not quite enough. And it is impossible to drill a hole right there unless you have a drill press, which I do have, but we also have to take the end off because if we move the bracket back, this actually hits the um, core support. So I have a tool to do both of these jobs. You guessed it, it's my new plasma cutter from Yes Welder. If you guys have been following my videos, know that I use that heavily, and this is a perfect opportunity to use it again. And if you ever wanna get one, I have a discount code below, so go check it out. Um, this was like the mid-range product, I think it's, um, $450 or something like that. Super affordable, especially for us hobbyists and DIY guys and girls. So first step, to take this edge off, just set up a, a, um, a straight edge. And then I have, there's a guard on this because this is a touchless. You don't have to touch the material. It's, this is a welding table I made, so this is grounded. And the ground path goes right through and cuts that off. So let's see how it works. Fire in the hole. Oh yeah, like cutting butter. I love it. For the slot, I'm just gonna freehand it. All right, there's our slot. I got slot. Very nice. So I'm gonna take my flap disc dr uh, grinder and just take the slag off the back. Do the same thing with the driver's side, and we are good. Oh yeah, as you can tell, that worked great. I mean, look how solid this is. This is impressive. It's more solid than I had it before, so pretty excited. I also took the auto plumb fitting off the old radiator. It's two-piece, just unscrews. It was difficult to get off, so uh, I put it back on. And if you want to go check out that video, go right there, check out that link. It covers how to put this on. It also covers how to properly cut A and hose. And as you can tell, I have a little length discrepancy. So I have to change the length of the hose. I do all that in that video. So go check that out. I'm gonna go ahead and get that done now. I'm not gonna film it. Be right back. I got both hoses on, which I'm excited about. I had to change lengths on both of them. But before I get the fans on, I wanted to show you guys something. This is the Petcock that comes with the cold case radiator, which is actually really decent. I've seen a lot in my life, and this is actually probably one of the better ones, but I much prefer the 90 degree version, which I think you can get on Amazon. I'll try and find the link where I got mine, but the reason I like it is when you go to drain, you can just stick a 3 8 inch hose on there and go to town. So that's why I like this so much. I'm gonna install this and then drop the fans in. There we go. And yes, I'm wearing gloves because I just cleaned this thing. I'm cutting down on fingerprints. Just me being anal, sorry. Put the screws in, put the wire harness on, fill it with coolant, and I fill from here first with the thermostat out until I get to that level. Put this back together, fill the rest through the radiator, let it warm up a couple times, and then we'll do our test. All right, the engine's getting warmed up. We're gonna do our test of the cold case radiator with the cold case fans. So when my Phytech unit gets up to, I think it's 203, the fans on will turn to a number one. I'll start the timer. And we're just gonna time to see how long it takes for the fans to turn off, because that's what the current test has been. And I will probably fast forward through this and so you can watch it, so I'm not lying to you. 
but I'm really not expecting a big difference between the Be Cool radiator with the twin 14s on it because as I showed you, the fin sizes are really close. So uh, we'll see. So as soon as that gets to, I think 203, I'll hit the button. And we're off. Getting close. Ah, oh, what happened? Man, I can't believe I just messed that up. Well, I need to go review the video now because I thought it was like 112 or something. So I'll go ahead and review the video. I know you guys saw it because I let it play. Uh, and then we'll go write it down, see where we're at. All right, here's our chart we used last video. Uh, just a refresher. Be cool fans with the 12 inch fans, dual fans that come with that kit. 135 was the time to shut off the fans. Run number two, the Be Cool Radiator, where I put the twin 14s on from Cold Case. We got to 115 today, so the ambient temperature is very similar. Uh, Cold Case with the 14s, and I, re I reviewed the tape. Here's a picture of it, but it's basically 112. I'm going to add a second because I might have started the timer a little late. So let's just call it 113. And as predicted, it's just marginally better than the Be Cool Radiator because of that fin size. The Be Cool Radiator is actually very good. It has one inch tubes. The cold case unit has one and a quarter inch tube. So that would explain this little difference. And you never know, if I did this test 10 times, it might be two seconds higher. I mean, who knows, right? So case in point, twin 14 inch fans work on, will help any radiator get better. But one more thing we got to do. Let me show you. One last thing to show you guys. It fits right on that cap. So you can line it up perfectly. You can even epoxy it so it's in the right clocked position. But that tops it off. Hope you guys learned a lot on this series. I sure did. And I'm still a fan. Even though we had really marginal improvement over the Be Cool system. The Be Cool system is more expensive. So better bang for your buck. So go hit that discount code below. And until next time, build them fast, drive them faster. See ya.